Today's episode is going to be all about CSS libraries and how we can use them to add additional functionality to our websites and also speed up web development. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Webflow and Code where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please do so. Um, and if you want to hear when I release these episodes every single week, then obviously hit the notification bell. Um, and if you're excited, just smash the like button. There are tons and tons of CSS libraries out there. And essentially what they do, they, they, they're pre-written CSS and JavaScript that we can use uh, using their documentation. We can use certain classes and certain markup that match the way they intended to do them and, and it will style and, and add additional functionality to our websites. It can speed up our websites massively. If you're, if you're building a website and you're not so uh, concerned about design yet or it's still being done, you can, you can leverage a CSS library or a framework to, to kind of get started and then sort of phase it out and add your own styling a little bit later on. So I, I've got a website open right now, CSS DB, and you can see the, these are just sort of the most uh, popular ones as they've been starred on GitHub and Bootstrap being the most popular and Font Awesome which is the ones we'll be talking about today but as you can see there is tons there. So let's take a look at how we might add a, add a CSS library to our Webflow project. So I've just clicked on Bootstrap and what I'm looking for in the download, we can't add our own files yet in, in Webflow but what, what often these people do is, is host the CSS on a web server somewhere, and, and that's called a CDN, a Content Delivery Network. And as you can see, Bootstrap have got theirs here. There's the CSS file that you're able to download. You're able to do the JavaScript one as well, and by all means, you can do that. We're not gonna cover JavaScript um, just yet, um, but if you're interested in using it, then I think that the things we'll discuss today will apply for the JavaScript as well. So I can, I can copy that library there. And then if we go into our Webflow project and the settings of our Webflow project and in the custom code, we can then add that line of CSS, the linking to the CSS to the head of our code. And now we have access to that in our project. Now, the one big caveat, which is the caveat um, which I explained in the very first episode, is that we don't see the changes. We do not see the changes made. Um, for instance, we've got a we've got a um, I know, you know, I've used Bootstrap for years. I know that I can add a row, oh, apologies, call, SM6. I know I can add that and this will create out of the box a grid system. The grid system for Bootstrap is a very popular way to get quickly get set up with grid systems, but you know, we're not seeing anything, of course, when I publish. I'll then see that that is 50% of the of the width of the screen so that's the one caveat which underpins everything we do in code but w what what we can do is um so if we head into the documentation and go to components then we've got a whole list of components that we can use um, in our webflow projects because now we've included that library and you've got an example here and then of course and then the markup then just below so what i'm looking for here is that i just need to do a a div with these two classes, so alert and alert primary. So we head back to here, um, we'll remove that, go alert, and then alert primary. And then if we publish that, then there we go. We can see that that's taking shape there. So if we go into, there's a whole heap of them here and again, if, if, if you're able to, in your mind, to bypass that it maybe doesn't look as pretty in the editor, but you know that it's, gonna, that's going to um, appear um, in, in, the, in the published version, then, then the more power to you. Another interesting thing about Bootstrap is because it's maintained by some very, very intelligent people, what you'll actually pick up on is, see this role here, you've got a role of alert. Now we can add, um, we can add any kind of attribute to um, our elements that we like. Publish. And looking at the uh, documentation, it'll actually teach you how to write good HTML because they, they, they this needs to work on, there we go, so role equals alert. Um, 
because it's maintained by some very, very smart people, you can learn from them and you can learn the correct way to, to create HTML. Um, and if you're unsure about anything, then just, just Google it. What, what is role and what does alert mean? You know, here we go, we've got headings. You can, the, there's different formats of these alerts. We've got bold text. Uh, we've got some JavaScript stuff there if you wanted to include the JavaScript library. Again, we can we can um, copy that, copy that stuff. So that's Bootstrap, another way to add sort of cool uh, components and elements to quickly get your your styling um, or your or basic website kind of spun up very very quickly. Another popular one is Font Awesome. Now we've spoken about this in a previous episode, and Font Awesome is essentially a font. Uh, a font that is instead of a library of letters is it's a library of icons and you can already see why this is why this could, how this could be so um, powerful and we've already spoken about using it in the before um, section of our website uh, before pseudo element but if we get started here again oh we need to put in our put in our uh, email so you can put in your email and in fact let's just go font font awesome CDN we just want someone who's there we go we just want someone who's put that on there so it's actually maintained by bootstrap you can see so we can copy that again we can put that in our webflow project uh, wherever mine is uh, in the project settings custom code So there's the URL, so unfortunately we need to write this out ourselves. rel equals style sheet href equals, and there we go. And now we have access to Font Awesome. Now with, with Font Awesome, again, I, you know, I strongly suggest looking at the documentation and how to get started. So on Font Awesome, if we look at the documentation, we can start to see how we should uh, mark up the, the 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 classes and how we need to use them. So, um, for this, for a camera, FAS and FA camera. Now, an interesting thing about um, the font awesome is I, I've not really understood this why, but if we have a div, uh, I've I've never found. I you I'd use FA. And the S is supposed to stand for solid, but I've never had it had it work. Okay, future Sam here editing in a, in a new property, actually, a uh, new place. Let's just rewind this a second because I just noticed something in the screen and why FA didn't work. So yeah, as you can see, I'm obviously including Font Awesome 5 and that's why FA is working. So I guess if you use the newer version, you can then use the FAS and, and all the um, font styles that the free version gives you. It's just the CDN that I'm using is an old version of the CDN, which is why I need to use FA. Right, cool. So, and then we have two classes here. Of course, we need to make this in line. Um, maybe we can, there we go, Pope left. Publish it and refresh our page. And there we go, there's our camera. There's our camera icon. So as you can see from using CSS libraries, we can very, very quickly add super cool um, features and things we that would take us a while to do um, if, if we didn't have a CSS library to help us. So give this episode a thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or, or thoughts around this. Um, and until next time, happy no coding.